entitled the sermon Freedom Living and it's important I think Jeanette brings out an important is there a difference between Independence Day and freedom well we have an independence uh, and at the same time though what we have to recognize that in our independence we have dependence as Christians we are dependent and what we, what we see different is that we're dependent in a wonderful way We're dependent upon God. We're dependent upon the Holy Spirit. We're dependent upon our Lord and Savior Jesus. And we're dependent on them in many ways, which we rejoice in the dependence that we have. And actually, we're dependent upon one another because we need one another. Uh, Life without each other is not life. It is where we can share our lives with other people that not only can we love, uh, but we can be loved. And that makes life so different. But when we talk about freedom living, the ability to live with the freedoms that we have, and where our freedoms end and other people's freedoms begin, the freedoms that we find in Christ Jesus, and how that he gives us freedom. And I want to talk about that. And the concept actually was kind of epitomized, for me anyway, in a cartoon on Thursday in the paper. Uh, Now, of all cartoons, it's Bizarro. I should have made uh, a slide of this. I started to make this. But it's, it's a cartoon. It has a big candy bar. And the candy bar is called Fleeting Joy. And it has on it a flower, and in the middle of the flower, kind of where the, the bud in, would be in the middle, is a skull and a light. So the, the, the candy bar, enjoy, and then it's got here, followed by guilt, misery, self-loathing, and then it says very dark chocolate. So my subtitle to this sermon is, Is Chocolate Thin? You see, because in our freedom living, what we find is that we have oftentimes fleeting joy. We feel free for a moment in Christ Jesus, and then we are overcome with guilt and misery and self-loathing. It is hard for us to believe that we actually have the freedoms that Jesus makes available to us and to appreciate those freedoms. And so how do we use those freedoms? We see in our country today where we have lots of freedoms, but oftentimes those freedoms are used irresponsibly. And we, as a result, there are a lot of problems and difficulties that come from that. Now let's take a look at some of the things that we might understand. God gave Adam and Eve freedom of choice in the garden. But with that freedom of choice, he also said, now in this choice, though, we want, I want you to know and understand there's one thing you cannot do. You cannot take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't want you to do that. Because if you do, there's a price to pay for that. So the, but they thought, well, this is kind of boxing me in. You know, Satan led them to believe that that was confining, that they would be freer if they could take of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, it doesn't stop there in in that case. We find that when God brought Israel out of Egypt, from slavery, from bondage, into freedom, they couldn't take the pressure. They couldn't take the freedom that they had. In fact, after a while, when they were being people that are free, they made choices, they decided all kinds of things, and they didn't know how to handle that freedom well. We find even in our world today, for example, that a young person that goes off to college, they've been in a home environment, they're very structured and all of that, that they go off to college, that first year is kind of spent drinking and carousing and having fun and their newfound freedom, which oftentimes they pay a a real price for in terms of grades, things they do, risky behaviors, etc., etc., Well, the same thing actually is true of Christians. 
when we find the freedom that we have in Christ, we tend to, to kind of want to, whoa, free at last, free at last. I can live, I can do, I, I, you know, I can be who I really am. Well, while God wants us to have freedom, and we have freedom in Jesus, what is freedom living all about? Well, I'm going to take a look at what Paul had to tell the church at Galatia. In Galatians chapter 1, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, we read this. The Apostle Paul writes to them. He's, he's been talking to them about giving the allegory, allegory of Hagar and, and Sarah, the, the, those born of the free woman. And then he tells us in verse 5, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for this reason that Jesus has set us free. Now, he doesn't say that somebody else has set them free. It's important that he is saying that Jesus is the one who sets us free. But he says, stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And the yoke of slavery that he's talking about was the law, the circumcision, things that they were required to do under the old covenant brought into the new covenant that they, that they didn't have to do any longer. But then he goes on and gives a warning message in verse 13. You, my brothers, were called to be free. And I suggest to all of you and I that we are called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Now, This then speaks to the purpose of why we have freedom. One is because we're called to have freedom. Jesus has brought us in to to have freedom. But in that freedom, we are called to love one another. And that is what our freedom is all about. And that's what Jesus is helping us to see and to understand that in freedom, we have the opportunity to love, to be loved, and to love one another. So we want to take a look here today, is where has Christ made us free? Where has he made you free, where in times past you may have been imprisoned to one degree or another? And let's just just take, uh, for example, if you were not an Israelite, and I would suggest that several of us give the appearance of not being Israelites in this congregation, then you do not have the same freedoms in, you know, in God that ancient Israel had. But in Jesus, we find a freedom. We find a freedom to belong, to know that we are His because there, we find scriptures that tell us that there is neither male nor female, bond or free, Jew or Gentile. Rather, we are all one in Christ. Notice that there's a new freedom that we find in that. So we, we, I'm just trying to give us examples of where Jesus might have made us free uh, for sinners. Not that any of you are that. But in case you happen to have somebody or you know somebody who has at one time sinned, then there's a freedom that we find in terms of for, forgiveness. There's a freedom also in what he has done and how he has done that. So then our question is, how do we use our freedoms? And then we also need to ask ourselves, can we free ourselves? Can we break off the shackles that have us enslaved? Are we capable of doing that ourselves? Well, I want to give us, take a look at some basic understandings when it comes to freedom. And the the scripture that we're looking at here is what Jesus has to say about freedom. In John chapter 8, and I know that we've gone over this many times before, but with the 4th of July, Independence Day coming, we think about the the people who have lived and died for our country, that we might have freedoms, but also, brethren, people who have lived and died so that other people might have freedoms. Feeling the blues today or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life? or need spiritual advice, we can help. Log on to WorldwideChurchOfGod.com or WCGFairfield.blogspot.com and stay connected to reality. 
Worldwide Church of God in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto are located in the San Francisco Bay Area, regarded as the most prosperous region in the United States. We believe Jesus Christ when he proclaimed in Matthew 6.24 that serving God is more important than serving mammon. We welcome everyone to come and worship and fellowship every Saturday at the times listed on your screen and on our website, worldwidechurchofgod.com.